morning. Welcome, everybody. This is level three on a Friday and a beautiful day in the villages. Oh, I can hardly stand to look at myself because it's I'm out of sync. I'm totally out of time. Uh, <laughs> so that's technology. That's the way it is. Today we're doing the Christmas waltz. Um, this was actually written for Frank Sinatra. It was written for him. It's kind of nice to have a song written for you, huh? Um, and it was recorded in 1954. It, and, and the B-side, it was actually the B-side of a new recording of White Christmas that he was doing. One day, um, during a very hot spell um, in, in L.A., I'm trying to read my own writing. <laughs> Um, oh, <laughs> the phone rang, and it was um, Jewel Stein, who, <laughs> I can't read my own writing, um, and Jewel Stein tells him, Frank wants a Christmas song. Okay, so it's summertime, and it's really hot. Frank wants a Christmas song, so let's write something. <laughs> so that's how they wrote this one. In 1992, Mel Torme recorded this song for his first ever Christmas album. The first version that charted was not until 2003 when Harry Connick Jr. reached number 26 on the adult contemporary chart. But this has also been recorded by Peggy Lee, Doris Day, Jack Jones, Bing Crosby, Pat Boone, and the list goes on and on. The Letterman, Robert Goulet, the Osmonds, the Carpenters did a really nice version. Johnny Mathis, Andy Williams, Tony Bennett, and Nora Jones. So there's lots of stuff that happened. Now, Frank actually had an animated video that went along with this. That was pretty funny. Um, and he did it real slow. And then Amy Grant also did a very slow version with Mark Martell. The Carpenters, which is kind of the what I'm going to do it with today, they did kind of a lullaby waltz. And they started really slow, and then they started speeding it up. So I'm going to do that to show you that it's okay to change tempo midstream. So we're going to try that and see what we can do. Peggy Lee was very slow. Um, so all, all these different versions, some of them were a little jazzier, some of them were very slow. So you can play this however you are feeling. Even if you're on the same background. If you feel like playing it slow the whole time, play it slow. But I'm going to do a little Carpenter's thing here. I'm going to play it slow for the first part. And I am on Lullaby Waltz. I'm going to start at 104. And then I'm going to up it to 125. Ooh, in the middle of the song. So see if, let's see if we can do it smoothly enough to make it sound good. Okay, here we go. Lullaby Waltz. And I'm on, I believe this is a rhythm preset zero, the music box on top, which is like bells, just your crystal bells will work, and a flute on the bottom. And what, what rhythm was it, Dawn? Lullaby waltz. Okay. So it's under your waltz. It's everything under your waltzes. And this is going to be a homework assignment to try all your different waltzes and find all the different variations you can do and maybe you like the waltz but you don't like the sounds then you can go into your categories and do your bells and your holidays and or or your nostalgic and do horns if you wish or around the world and do some ethnic sounds if you wish so this is going to be uh, an exercise in finding stuff mixing and matching to make it work right now i'm just using bells on top flute on bottom and a pretty lullaby waltz.
So did you, did you notice where, um, it's, I'm still kind of struggling on trying to get it to be very smooth, very smooth. Yeah, I know, um, the connection, the bad connections, Ron, that's on my side. This computer's very slow today. I don't know why. I turned it on and it's like slow motion. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, the connection is bad on my end. So my apologies for that, but that's technology. There's pretty much nothing I can do about it. Um, like I said, if I freeze up and go away, somebody stop and tell me you froze up so that I, I can uh, get back in and uh, get the lesson. So this is, this is just a real pretty song. And I used the flute on the bottom and then the bells on top, which was the music box bells. And the second time I played it, I added the strings. So in the middle of page two, third line, and this song of my, boy, my voice is terrible today. Um, where the and this song of mine, I put fermatas over, third line, first measure, over the D and over the C. So you're going to put little rainbows with, with dots. It's a little like a bird's eye over the D and over the C. And I did lots of fill-ins. Then I went to the next faster rhythm. It's the same rhythm. I did put it on altar style. The song of mine started going a little faster. And then I played the entire second part using a couple of string taps. So just silly little nice things that you can add. If you don't like it, going from one speed to another, don't do it. Just stay on the slow or stay on the fast and do it that way. I kind of like it jazzed up a little bit, but most of the singers that I heard did do it really slow, really slow. Dawn. Huh? Okay, when you say, so, so when you got to the G7, oh. you said you, you changed the rhythm? I didn't change the rhythm, I changed oh. the tempo. Oh, the tempo. Okay. I put the altar style on. Yeah, so basically what I was doing is, um, um, let's start with that A minor chord at the top. Now, on the D. Okay. So I held those notes as long as I wanted to and just did the fill-ins, the D and the C, and I do have chords for you to put on top of those. When I got to Song of Mine, that's when I upped the tempo, and I put it on a different preset because you don't want to up the tempo by doing this in the middle of a song. So what okay. I did is I put it on a different preset, and so when I go from 104, which is this tempo, to this tempo, difference? Yeah. So Dawn, are you saying that when you pushed up, put it on altar there, that increased the tempo? No, I had to increase the tempo myself and save right. the preset. Okay. Yeah. That makes but sense. But I also did altar style just to give it a, something a little bit different. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is something we have never done before. We've never done a change in tempo. But if you go to YouTube and check out the Carpenters, you're going to see that they start really slow, and then they pick it up and jazz it up a little bit. Well, you know what I noticed when you played it, and then I heard Frank Sinatra sing it, mm -hmm. it is amazing. The man ha was talented. Oh, very much the Singing so. is a challenge. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, no, he, he did a, a real nice job, but I got a kick out of the animated video that went with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Dawn, yeah. I just want to clarify something. Uh -huh. So, so you added the altar style, you changed the preset, and you changed the tempo, and you saved it. Yes, that's what I did. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. I started, I started on Lullaby. Yeah, okay, okay. At 104, I believe it's rhythm preset zero. Yeah, it is. It's rhythm preset yeah, zero. Yeah. And then I upped the tempo to 125, added the altar oh. style. Okay, okay. 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 I, thought that, I thought that by changing the preset, it would automatically also change the tempo. No, you no, have no. And if you're, and as a matter of fact, just the opposite. If you're oh. on the fly, if you can actually change rhythms as you go if you feel like it, but your tempo will not change. Okay. 
Okay, if I'm changing, I can go from one rhythm to the next and not, if I don't stop it in between, the tempo will stay the same. Okay. So if you want to increase the tempo, you yeah. either have to physically increase Do the it. tempo, and that's right. kind of awkward to say yeah. the least, while you're trying to do fill in and change a chord right, yeah. and change a note. So I did that all at once, but okay. going from one smoothly to the next, the best way to do that for me anyway, was to do the fermatas over yep. the D and the C. And then when I got to the G7 chord and the A, that's when I kicked into that high gear. Right, got it, thank and it, you. It, and it seemed a little bit smoother for me to go from one to the next. Try it and see if you like it. If not, don't worry about it. Play it all slow, play it all fast, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that would be smarter to save it then. Save it, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Mm -hmm. So your job, your homework assignment is going to be finding all the waltzes. And if you have altar style, try your altar styles because that's going to be a way to, to make it a little bit different. Add some strings to your bells. That's going to make it a little bit different. Or you can take it on a totally different track. You could do something like, let's see, Bojangles. Bojangles is going to give you something totally different. Changes the flavor a little bit, but it's still a cute, pretty waltz when you do that. So mm -hmm. you can change it to pretty much whatever you want to do. You want to do the chipmunks doing the Christmas waltz? Why not? This is, again, to get you to push the buttons on your organ to find more than one. Some of the recipes you create you're not going to like, and some of them you're going to say, yes, that's the right combination. Write it down. Write it down. If you find something that you fall in love with, write it down. Okay. Write it down. Jazz waltz I, I have written down from a couple years ago, and that one... That's in waltz one. And I have it written down at 140. Ooh, now that might be a little fast, but let's just see. A little jazzier. Okay, so your tempo can now go anywhere from my first tempo, which was 104, and that last tempo was 140. Yeah. So don't be afraid to try different tempos because you may feel like, ooh, I like it slow. I like, I like having Frank Sinatra sing it at me. So you might also, but remember, this is a waltz, so keep it as a waltz. This is one I don't think I'd put in 4-4 in four, four time. Mm -hmm. But try all your different waltzes. Now you're going to have to experiment. If you've got like an easy four, make sure that you, you've, got, you've got three different three quarters to choose from. Okay. Make sure that now you experiment with adding strings. If you're on waltz pianist, make sure you add some strings to your left hand. Okay, I'm, Fred, I'm talking directly to you right now. <laughs> Add some strings to your left hand, and you've got two buttons right here, an ensemble and a more. Make sure you add that ensemble to your left hand so that you get more body to your song. Also, make sure you get those drums all the way to the top, and then you can go into your more and add some bells as a duet and see how that works for you. I think that would be a real cute way to play it. Or keep it on full band if you want, that works too. Yep. I have added a few chords, not very many, just a few. We are, by the way, in the key of F, so if you're wanting to use your introduction, you use your introduction and start it with a blue F. You always wanna start your introduction in the key that the song is written. Mm -hmm. 
Line one, you may put a seven on the G minor, which would be F, G, and B flat. Don't worry about it, otherwise just G and B flat is fine. Second line is fine. Third line, you may put a seven on the G minor. Fourth line, make that first F an F major seven, which would be E and F. Now, if you just feel like playing F, that's okay because look at what your right hand is playing. Your right hand is picking up the E. So if your right hand is playing that major seven note, right? Your F major seven is E and F, and your right hand is actually playing that major seven with that E. Now that's only for one measure. Second measure, over the Blackton quarter note, put a D minor or a D minor seven, dinosaur minor. Last line on that page. Oh, I'm sorry, Dawn, where was, what was that? Oh, the D minor where? That goes on line four, measure two, beat one over that blacked in quarter note. Okay, D minor. D minor, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, next line, third measure. You may put a seven on the G minor if you wish. Second page, top line, no changes. Woohoo! Second line, third measure. You may put a seven on the G minor. And here's your advanced chord for those of you who would like to try it. The A minor, if you wish, you may make it an A minor seven flat the fifth. Woo! But that's going to make a real pretty chord. And the notes are E flat, G, A, and C. Here's just the A minor. Let's just put it on easy. Here's the A minor. Here's the A minor seven flat the fifth. Hear the difference? It's a pretty chord. And then you go to that D7 chord. Now, if you wish on your fermata notes, over the D for the word and, you may play a D7 augmented dog, D-A-U-G, with a seven. And your notes for that are C, as in chicken, D as in dinosaur, F sharp, and B flat. And then over the C, where you have your other fermata, go back to a plain old D7, C and D. It's subtle, so if you don't feel like doing it, don't worry about it. And you're going to have your fill-in going at the same time. Um, rest of the line, no changes. Next line, no changes. Second ending. I am going to add a measure and add a chord because they really did not complete the chord progression. I don't know if it's because they felt like they ran out of room or if that's the way that originally was. You notice the chord progression in the first ending is F, D minor, G minor, C7. F, D minor, G minor, C7. So why didn't they do that same thing on the bottom? We are going to. So we're gonna add another measure F, D minor, G minor, C7, that's your extra chord and extra measure, and then go to the F. Okay. Okay, that completes that, com completes that chord progression, and I think it sounds better. And that's it. That is it. Nice, easy song pretty song and it gets you experimenting with your waltzes and no i've never ever recorded ave maria 
I've done it, but I've not recorded it. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I found one on Patreon that Robert did, but he didn't didn't go through it very well. He was doing a, a whole lesson on an organ, and that song was in it. He oh. did talk about it a little bit, but not enough. Okay. Yeah. I think I've played it on the on on a grand marquee yeah. demonstration or something, yeah. but I don't. Th I've never recorded it. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I played the entire thing either. It's a, you, it's, well? a, it's a very beautiful song. You just got to count as you're playing because mm -hmm. it's got to go slow and progressive. That actually would not be, remind me, Freddie, that would actually not be a bad song to do um, the week of New Year's. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, that, because it's easy enough, but it's also got some, some qualities to it that we can use to put on our organ and do some good stuff. Right. So okay. remind me, uh, you know what, and I'll I'll make a note of it too on my on my list okay. of stuff yeah. to do. That would be a good song to do the week of New Year's. Yes. Okay. Don, when I Don, when I did the Ave Maria on my organ, mm -hmm. I used the you if you use the All Holy Night stop mm -hmm. or the style. But not everybody it has that. Perfect. Yeah, huh? but not every yeah, not okay. everybody has that. That's the thing. Yeah. It's good in yeah. some gospels too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or that's the Schubert version. Or just the easy and a golden harp. Yeah, that'll work yeah, too. That works pretty too. And of course, this gentleman that you see waltzing by here, that's our favorite Eric. Hopefully you've seen <laughs> Eric um, recently. If you haven't, see me after class. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Eric. Sue Kelly says, Merry Christmas, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> He's outside already. <laughs> OK. Um, any questions? Any questions about the song? Uh, Don? Yeah. On the last page where you added the margin and then the yeah. um, So you're saying, don't forget that uh, tie, just uh, uh, play the F, play the right? Uh, what I, when I'm adding a C7. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah, I'm you adding, did. I got it. Yep. And see I that F, you, see how I just drew in an extra measure? And you're just Correct. tying that F the whole way across. That's all you're okay. doing. That's all you're doing. But if you add that extra chord, I think it really, I did. That, that completes the chord progression. F, D minor, G minor, C7, back to the F. It, com it just completes the progression. To my ear, it sounds better. It does. Yeah. yeah. So just add that extra extra one in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do some fingering on this. Um, yeah, well, it's early yet. Early yet. If you wanted to try a country waltz, those of you that have the country waltz, which is your um, waltz full band, if you are on, on the EZs and the EYs, country waltz would sound pretty as well. You might want to up the tempo just a bit only because 90 is going to really drag it a little bit. And now you can pretend Willie Nelson is singing it or Hank Williams. And if you don't like the fiddles, let's go to, let's go to some country guitars. care for it but you know what experiment with it experiment with it try your waltzes this is your homework assignment is to just use this song to try every single one of your waltzes and see what you think try different tempos you are in control of your tempos you don't have to take the tempo that comes up you can put it where you want it and as we've seen you can go from low to high on this one. You can jazz it up if you wish. Um, the only thing I probably wouldn't do, don't go to 4-4, four four, although I can see some of you are going to do it. <laughs> some of you will try it. Let's do the roadmap. It's not too hard. All of page one, 
page two, line one, two, three, four. In the middle of line four, there you see your first ending. And it goes to line five, first measure. Put your color on the dots. The dots are going to send you back to the beginning of the song where the dots are. So you've got those pickup notes that take you back to the beginning. Pretty easy, pretty cut and dried song today. And then you play the whole thing again. When you get to page two, line one, line two, line three, the middle of line four, right before you get to the first ending, put a colorful two. And if you need to put an arrow down to the second ending, feel free to do that. And that's it. <laughs> Okay. You could do carousel, carousel three quarters if you have it. Of course, that comes up at 140. I'm going to slow it down to 130 and see what happens. fun with this one. Mm -hmm. Have some fun with this one. I like that. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to find some recipes that you go, okay, I like that background. I don't like that sound. I want to play some bells. And if you can't find the, oh, there's lots of bells actually in the rhythm presets for carousel. Mm -hmm. Rings and bells. Hmm. Or you could go the big band route, go big band walls. That works too. So this is just to get you really looking at your instrument. So now you found the right waltz and you go, okay, I like that one. Or I like the smooth piano three quarter. I'm gonna go real slow and sexy like Frank did. You might wanna then go to your category presets and find your bells or your holidays or even your lush categories and find some really cool things that normally you wouldn't use. Because Christmas time is the time for us to use our bells. That's the number one, number one sound that you're going to find. Well, back to the bells here. 82 is a little slow. Play with your harmonies if you find a sound you like, or just go up and down the line. Hand bells. Okay, are you noticing that the balance is not quite right? Are you hearing too much background and the bells are kind of low? Something else you can do. Make sure then you go, all right, I like this background, I like this sound, but I'm hearing very little melody and way too much background. Your orchestra plus, don't just turn it off, but lower the volume. Lower the volume. You don't always want to just eliminate. See, if this is too loud, Eliminate it by just turning Orchestra Plus off. Sometimes you don't want to do that. Let's just bring down the volume of your Orchestra Plus so it's there, but it's in the background more. And then it'll balance better. Okay. 
On your easy fours and easy tens, it's going to be your style. You have a style volume over in your graphic mixer. Just bring that down a little bit if you're, if you're experiencing no balance. If you're on a, um, an EY300 or an EY320, the fanfares and journeys, you have one of the coolest features is that balance, that balance stuff that's over here. And if you need more melody, you just hit, hit the upper one a couple of notches. You don't want to knock out your background completely but it will bring your bells up and the rest of your background down at just the touch of one button, which is nice. Don. Yeah. <clears throat> I learned to play from E to E, not C. In the left hand, you know. In the left hand, okay, okay. Um, I mean, Janice, I'm... are you playing full fingered chords? Yes. Yeah, yeah. When so, I learned full fingered chords on an organ, I learned from F to F, which is basically the same thing. Well, I think maybe, yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. So, in that card where it's a C, D, F sharp, and B flat. C, D, F sharp. Okay. Let's see. You, you'd play it. Well, do I have to play it from, the, from that? Yeah, can I move that? You can, you can move it. You can change the inversion. You can do F sharp, B flat, C, and D. F sharp, B flat, C, and D. Just change the inversion. Yeah. In inversions on the Lowry's are only important. You can do any order you want with the exception of the six chords. Right. The ones that have a six by it have to be in root position. Like if you've got a C6, you have to play it with a C on the bottom. Because if you change the inversion, it just change the order of the notes is basically all you're doing. What happens is it becomes an A minor chord and it's going to sound minor. Mm -hmm. So sixes are the only ones you really have to keep in the same position. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Good question. OK. Anybody else have questions? Keep it easy on this one. Just have fun. I do have fingering for you. Um, next week, we'll do God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, and the week after that, um, Ave Maria. I'll, I'm going to write those down so I don't forget them. Very cool. I can't believe we're this close to Christmas already. The week after next, you're doing what? God Rest Ye gen Gentlemen, and what Next else? week, we're doing God Rest Ye, and that should take us to, what's the date? What's Oh, maybe I got an extra week in there yet. I maybe, yeah. I maybe have an extra week in there yet. Yeah, there's two. Okay. That's the 23rd. 23rd. No, there's only one. Yeah. And what were you going to do on the 23rd? Um, no, the uh, the one I want to do for New Year's is the Ave Maria. So we've got an extra one to oh. fill in in between. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Right. That'll be on the 30th. Yeah, the 30th is going to be Ave Maria. Yeah, okay. that'll be beautiful. Yep. What book is that in? Not sure. I'll find out for you. <laughs> I don't, I don't know a couple of different books. I know Book 167 and uh, 400 has it. And there are two versions. Yeah, there are. Yeah. So I'll, you know, before the before the fact, I'll make sure I figure out which one yeah. I'm doing, and uh, get you the. Get yeah, the, the 167 right one. book. I think that's a Bach book. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll get the right one. Have it. That'll be fun. That'll be a nice one to do. Good suggestion, Freddie. Thank you. All right. Um, enjoy your weekend. In case you haven't noticed, I'm kind of tired today. I got up at 3 and couldn't go back to sleep. <laughs> so my apologies. My apologies. But uh, if, I'm, if I'm not seeming like I'm like, woo, all over the place <laughs> like I usually am. <laughs> I need a nap. I do need a nap. Going to back and take a nap. I have no time for that. You're too young for that. I'm too young for that, Don. That's I'm too young for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're sweet. <laughs> uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, yes, tomorrow. Don't forget, it is the review for the right. Christmas camp. Um, uh, it's actually going to be question and answer session. So I've already gotten a few questions from people in my classes that I have to kind of 
review and, and make sure I know what I'm talking about before I get there. Um, if I don't have the answers to your questions, as like it pertains to another artist, I will find out for you and get back to you. Is there a is is there a time limit on how long that's going to run? On, on how many hours tomorrow? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God! We'll try. No, there's no time limit. We'll we'll try okay. from one one to two thirty and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't. But yeah, yeah it'll, it'll be totally in store and online. You can do it oh, either okay. way. You can do it either way, and yes, um, I'm ready for all your questions. If I don't get very many, then we will work on presets, how to do them, and how to create them, because I did not have really time to do any of that. And I know Fred also asked me for fingering on um, the two songs that I did. So I will, I will put that in at the end as well. Yeah, the setup okay. suggestions that you did for... Your songs were great Thank for you. my fanfare. Thank you. Good. Good. I spent a lot of time doing that. So um, yeah, it worked out well. Good. I'm glad. I had fun. Very happy it. with uh, Dance of the Sugar Sub Sugar Plum Fairy. I can't even yeah. talk to you. Cool. <laughs> Very yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thank Very you. Good. You're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. This is what I enjoy doing. I love making the arrangements and I, I love teaching. So that's what I love to do. Let's do fingering. Yes, we're not going anywhere. Don, don't worry. We are going to do fingering for the rest of you. Thank you for coming. And, and we'll see you tomorrow or next week. Right now, pencils out. I know we spent a lot of time yakking about stuff today. <laughs> Here we go. C4, D5, C4. Low C, one, so you're doing a one to four stretch. High C, four, C, four, C, four, C, four. Why? Because you still have to go up to that high D with the five. B flat three, A two, B flat three, G one. A three, low C, one, a3, again, long stretches between your fingers. C5, B4, G2. A4, G3. Third line, D1, F2, G3, A4, low B flat 1. Now, I always tell you, we try to keep that thumb on the right hand off the black keys. Sometimes we have to do it to make it work. So from a four down to a one is the best way to get there. B flat one, C two, D three, E one. Circle it. That's going to be a thumb tuck. Fourth line, E one, F two, E one, F two, G three. Put an arrow on this next F, make it a one. So you're going to do a three to a one real close together. The next G is a 2, C4, D5, last line on that page, C4, low C1, high C4, 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 D5, B flat 3, A2, B flat 3, G1. Let's go to the top of the second page. A3, low C1, A3, high C5, B flat 4, G2, A4, you might want to put an arrow on that one or make a, put a little check mark because you're, again, getting them real tight together, A4, G3, second line, D1, F2, G3, a4, B flat one, C two, several ways to do this one. Um, D three, E one with a circle, high C four. Your fermata notes are D five, C four, A three, low D one, A three. Lots of stretching here. A three. 
C5, A3, low D1, A3, high D5, C4, A3, D1, A3, D1, E flat 2, E natural 3, F4, first ending. Your pickup notes on the last line are C4 and D5, and your second ending is F4. And if you have a virtuoso, that would make for a really nice ending. Okay, any questions? You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you either tomorrow or next week sometime. Enjoy the weekend. <laughs>